It starts with a script. The first part of any mostly aimless, mostly pirate or any of my videos is the script. It's normally a Google Doc like this and will take a few edits and versions before it's ready. Once we know what everyone is going to do within the story, it's time to start recording. If there are multiple characters, then we have to pay close attention to their interactions and synchronize their parts in a door, a digital audio workstation. I use a tool called Mixcraft to arrange the parts, but we're not going to worry too much about that today. You can use any tool which can record your microphone. I tend to use Isotope as it's got some really good cleanup tools for removing background noise and for EQing the sound. Audacity has similarly powerful tools, but I find Isotope easier to work with. Once we've recorded and treated, we are ready to start working with models. We're using a tool called iClone. At the time of recording, I'm using version eight. It's very powerful, as you'll see. We start with an empty scene. Not much of an animation just yet. In this scene, I'm adding a Cobra Mark III cockpit, two chairs, and a model of Scorpius. I have these already prepared and stored within my custom props and actors. I load the cockpit. As you can see, it's very detailed, but it's not the entire ship, just the cockpit set. Just like a TV show, we only worry about what we can see. I position the chairs where they're supposed to go into the little recesses in the floor, and then we load in a Scorpius. He's facing the wrong way, so we rotate him around. Then we can pose him accordingly. He needs to be sitting nicely in his seat. I've sped this part up a little as it's important to get him just right. We do this using the edit motion layer option, clicking on his joints and moving them in the scene. You need to pay close attention to his feet being on the foot plates and his hands being on the throttle and stick. Once they're in the right places, we can pin him in place so they don't move when I make small adjustments to his position. Once I'm happy is in the right place, it's time to start working on the animation. The first thing we do is position a camera directly in front of a Scorpius's face. This isn't a camera we'll be filming with. This is so we can animate his expressions. If a Scorpius was going to be moving around, then we'd attach the camera to his chest, so it's always looking at his face, but allowing his face to move around. You'll see why in a moment. Now with the camera in place, it's time to load our audio file. First of all, as we're only interested in the Scorpius, we'll hide everything else. This is to keep the frame rate as high as possible when we're animating. With the Scorpius selected, I select the Aculips feature and load my audio file. Aculips works by matching the spoken audio to text, which it then uses to generate visims, which move the mouse. There's two ways to provide this text. One is to paste it in and let Aculips match the text. The second is to get it to generate the text based on what it thinks it can hear. I typically choose the second option and correct it. Words it doesn't know are in red. If they're correct but unknown, like Thargoid, you can add them to the dictionary for later. Fix up any bad interpretations and then apply.
We can check the resulting Vizines by replaying the animation. Make sure we can see the sound and Vizine track for Ascorbius as we might want to make changes. It's pretty good though. Far faster than the old way of adding Vizimes manually or the previous system where it did its best but added far too many Vizimes and I'd have to correct most of them anyway. Hours of painstaking work. Aculips is brilliant as it takes most of that away, as you can see. With the lip syncing in place, we can start puppeting Ascorbius. This is where everyone does things differently. My partner in crime, Terjana, does this differently as does Machine. Machine uses keyframed expressions and Terjana uses performance capture, both to great effect. I like to puppet though, so let's start puppeting. I record my puppetry in layers, moving from layer to layer when I'm happy. This approach is additive and difficult to edit, but hey, it's a performance. I start by soloing the eyebrows, raising or lowering them depending on whether the scene needs him to be perplexed or surprised or even annoyed. You can isolate individual facial muscles and puppet them to get the look that you want. I record this in real time using the mouse to gently puppet the face to the story. The next part is the eyes and head movement. In a typical scene, I'll animate the head and eyes together. I do this by selecting both the eyes and the head rotation. This really starts to bring the character to life, as you can see. Looking from left to right, as checking the panels or watching a ship out the cockpit window, or even looking over at somebody in the other seat and saying, oh, hey, Jane. Yeah, Jane's not there, he's at work today. Once this is done, I record the head rolling from side to side. This gives a quizzical or sarcastic expression. It also helps when looking from side to side to give the head a little tilt. So, with the facial animation done, we can then look to animating the body. For this simple scene, I'm not going to go too much into the animation. I'll briefly gloss over things. I'll use the Edit Motion Layer feature and place keyframes where I want the movement to occur. This isn't as immediate as the Direct Puppet feature, but in this case, I prefer it. It's just a lot more control. I pin the hands in place, as well as pin the hips so he doesn't slide around in the seat. So I'll just put some keyframes in. I'll speed this part up a little bit. You should get the gist of what I'm doing. There, so now when I speak, I can emote better, I can look around, I can look at Jane's vacant chair, and now I'm ready for an episode. So shall we make a short skit?